Have you ever had a business that didn't succeed and you just felt like a complete failure? Maybe you put your time, your energy, your heart into it, but it just didn't get to where you wanted it to be. Or maybe it just keeps you up and you just think, if I can't succeed in this, how am I gonna succeed in anything else? Like, can I really do it? I'm a failure. Has that ever crossed your mind? My name's Joe Moffitt and today's video, I wanna be able to share with you how to bounce back from failure in business as an entrepreneur in just five simple steps. All right, before we jump in, if you're new, subscribe to this channel, click on those notifications so that you can get updated when we throw out three videos a week that's gonna help you supporting you, making more influential, profitable, and fulfilled in what you do as an entrepreneur. So with that, let's jump into the five simple steps that are gonna help you overcome and bounce back from failure. Because let's be honest, if you're an entrepreneur, we've all been there. The only way to to succeed is to fail forward. In fact, yesterday on my Facebook post, I said I continuously fail and pick myself back up. And that's why my life gets better and better. And so I'd like you to chew on that and think about that because failure is part of entrepreneurship. Without failure, I wouldn't say you were an entrepreneur. I would say you're not, you're, uh, you're spoon fed. That's what I would say, a spoon fed Entrepreneur. That's what you would be called. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right, let's jump in. Number one, when we're starting to, when we've had a failure in business, it's easy to kind of beat ourselves up, right? Not want to pick ourselves back up. But I say this to my wife, I say this to all my clients, I say this to myself all the time. And that is, what did you learn? In this experience, you gotta identify throughout your venture, whatever it is, maybe you, you, you put up a new product, maybe you put up a new uh, course, maybe it was you started to sell a different product that you never did before, whatever it might be, or started with a new company. You gotta ask yourself, what did I learn from this experience? Because if you don't figure out what you learned, then you're just gonna go ahead and repeat that same mistake or mistakes, and you're gonna fail again, which we talk about failing forward and over and over and over, but if you fail from the same thing over and over and over, that's not called moving towards success, that's called stupidity or insanity, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again. So what did you learn from your venture? What was great about it? I really always like to figure out what was great about what you were doing. Because when you find out, hey, you know what? Every day I put my heart and soul into it, that was great. Every day I woke up and when I went to the office, I was making those cold calls, that's what was great. Whatever that is, I also like to ask, how can you take these lessons to help you succeed moving forward? When we can identify how we could succeed moving forward from these lessons, we don't have to repeat them. We actually have a platform that we have that next step or that foundation for you to have success and to move forward. All right, the second one is what does it mean, right? We can give things a disempowering meaning when we fail and it's easy to do that. Like you sink, it wasn't meant to be. It, I just, I don't, I'm not good enough moving forward. Do I partner? with someone? Do I invest again? Do I start a new business? I don't think so. I'm just, I'm a failure, right? You got to be careful on what you label the meaning of failure. Because I hate going back to this old saying, but you know, if you think about Thomas Edison, he didn't fail 10,000 times. For him, he found 9,999 9, 9, times that didn't work so that he could find the one time to make it work, right? And so you gotta be careful, what's the meaning? Was it that you failed? Or did you learn? See, I really don't believe that there's a thing called failure. The only way you fail is if you don't get back up. I always teach my son, when you fall down, when he falls down, I say, hey bud, he's crying because he fell down. I said, dude, what do we do when we fall? And it's get back up, right? I teach him to get back up. Failure is only permanent when you don't get back up. Otherwise, it's a learning lesson. And that's why number one was, what did you learn from this experience? You gotta learn so you don't repeat those same mistakes. So what's the empowering meaning you could give that, right? I, I was in network marketing. I wasn't making tens of thousands of dollars a month. I was making a grand or two, a couple grand here or there to be able to get me by at that stage of my life, right? But I didn't look at it as a failure. I looked at it, what did I learn? I learned some great things, people skills, how to connect, how to use my voice. And not in like a tonality perspective, but they share my message with people and, and influence and use that influence, right? What was it, what's the 
the meaning that I gave it that was that was the foundational component for me to take that next step in my career path with coaching and mentorship and consulting people. And so that was the critical next step. So what's that meaning? So let's jump into number three is from there, once you're clear on what did you learn, what's the empowering meaning from this, what's you, what was your success formula? Because what, there were some things you had to have done great, right? <clears throat> so what were those habits? What were those rituals that you did to allow you to have the success that you've had? Or what are the habits? and rituals that are going to allow you to succeed. Maybe depending on, well, let's just, we'll, we'll jump into this, uh, it's in the last one, but who was it that's in your field or who is it that's in your field that's having the success that you want that you can sit back and say, okay, what are you doing? What are the habits, right? If you're a salesperson, right? You have your own company, your own sales, you're doing door to door solar, maybe, you know, how do you become so successful? Well, if you're knocking 10 doors a day, that's probably not success. If you're knocking a thousand doors a day, or well, let's be realistic, like a hundred doors a day, that's where you're going to have more success 10 times, 10 X of success than the guy who's only knocking 10 doors. And so per day, so you got to identify what are those success habits and rituals in your specific business or line of work that's going to allow you to overcome failure in your next adventure. Otherwise, it's easy to get trapped in doing the same thing over and over and over again. So that's number three. Number four, you got to identify who are you becoming? It's great to, you know, you took this shot, right? You, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I'm proud of you if you failed in business. In fact, they say you haven't begun the path of success until you fail at least in three business opportunities. And so I love who you have be- or who you were in that process. You've grown, you've learned, you've given a new empowering meaning. But you gotta start saying, okay, that was the path. Where am I going? But more importantly, who am I becoming, right? <clears throat> On my journey, you know, right now it's like I'm always thinking, okay, like who am I becoming? I'm becoming a seven-figure annual earner every year that's in, that gives an impact and influence around the world, right? And that's who I'm becoming. I'm becoming this seven-figure person because I want to give back so much. I want to make that income to that next level because I want to be able to give at a greater level. But that's just personal. You know, you got to do what's best for you, but who are you becoming? Maybe you're becoming that, you know, million subscriber YouTuber. Maybe you're becoming that million subscriber podcast person. Maybe you're becoming the go-to solar guy in your in your uh, community or even in your state. You know, who are you becoming? You got to stop shifting on who you were because it's easy to say, oh, I was a failure in that business to who are you becoming? And that might be, you know, this a successful business person or entrepreneur. Maybe it's you're someone who's providing thousands of jobs for people in your local community or nationwide or maybe even globally you have to decide who are you going to become right because that is when you have a clear vision of who you're becoming that's that driving force that's what's going to pull you during those difficult times you have to say i'm not who i was who i am is who i'm becoming and you got to walk like that you got to talk like that you got to carry yourself there's times i go to the gym and i you know at five four in the morning and i'm working out and i'm like man how would how would a multi-millionaire who's making a global impact around the world, how would he walk to the cool down machine on the elliptical? How would he walk? How would he sit here? How would he talk to people? And so you gotta start acting like that now because that part of you, that who you're becoming, that already exists within you. You just don't believe it. There's the limitations because you're so fixated on who you were and that disempowering meaning versus who you are and who you're becoming. This is one of the biggest things that I find that in successful entrepreneurs around the world is they focus on who they're becoming and they start living that now. And I'm telling you, because you want to stay consistent with that identity, you automatically, as you start to take on your next venture, your next company or partnership, whatever that is, you start showing up differently, acting differently. I always encourage my clients, how would that person dress, right? How would he treat people? How would he talk? How would he walk? How would he sit there, right? Like that's what you want to focus on. 
<clears throat> so that's number four. And number five is you have to get around others who have succeeded because that starts to plant seeds of belief in you. It starts to stretch you and what's possible. It starts to raise your belief up. Look, a rising tide raises all ships. You want to get around people who are successful, who have what you want. And maybe it's not your competition, but maybe it's someone that's in your industry. So for example, I'm getting, I'm trying to get around more and more people who are successful on YouTube because I'm growing my channel. I want to make a global impact. I want to make a dent in people's lives in a good way to transform their lives, their businesses. Because I love working with high performing entrepreneurs because the more they're successful, the more they employ, the more money they make, the more of an impact we can make together. And so if I can help an entrepreneur go from seven figures to eight figures or eight figures to nine figures, that makes a huge impact on so many people. It makes this ripple effect out there in the world. And so you got to say, who's got the success you want? I have a gentleman on my Facebook page. He helps internet marketers with their messaging, their webinars, and he really helps them that are making six or seven figures, take them to eight, nine, or even 10 figures because he can make a huge difference for the marketplace out there. And I love that because you get around people like him, all of a sudden your belief goes through the roof. I can go to seven figures. I can go to eight figures. I can go to nine figures. And you start to believe that. And so you gotta get around successful people. And this is the biggest thing. And Napoleon Hill talks about it in the book, Thinking Grow Rich, The Power of a Mastermind. In fact, today I'm kicking off a Christian mastermind hot seat where about five or six business owners are coming together. I'm just hosting it. We're gonna give about an hour each week where we have a business owner. They're on the hot seat. They share their challenges in their business. And then we, as a collective unit, give different perspectives, ask questions, be able to give insights, add resources, to that business owner so that they can go to the next level and make a global impact in their business or even just say whatever impact they're looking to make. But anyway, you got to get around successful people and especially in the vehicle that you're doing. So if you're going to be launching webinars, you got to get around people who are launching webinars, making six, seven, eight figures, nine figures a year. Some of them are making that in a month. Like I coach people who do that. That's unbelievable. It's so awesome to see their success. If you're looking to launch a product on Amazon or a physical product in Walmart or Target, who's doing what you want to do? You got to get around them. You got to find out their secrets of success. What are their habits? What are the way that they think? You do that, all of a sudden, the game changes. And I will tell you, <clears throat> when I started my coaching journey, I was not good. <laughs> Trust me, I was decent. I was decent. I'll say it. That empowered, that meaning. What's the meaning I gave that, right? So I was decent, but I knew I was so, who I was becoming was so much greater and more powerful. And so I got around a powerful group of coaches, entrepreneurs, people who were successful in my field, and I started learning from them, training from them, getting everything I could, pulling out what was what made them successful, whatever their rituals or habits, and that helped me overcome what I considered failure at that time, that early stage, as a young coach, mentor, consultant. Um, it's just a game changer for me. So I highly, highly encourage you to take these five simple steps, implement them if you found yourself in a position of failure so that you can succeed on your next venture. And it, hey, it might not even be your next one. It might be two or three down the line, but that's okay. As long as you moving forward are never stopping and you're like my son, you get back up every time you fail or fall, you're gonna be successful. You'll find success along your path. You gotta keep putting that best foot forward, but learn from it, get your empowering meaning, get around successful people, learn their habits, and most importantly, focus on who you're becoming and live that way now. So with that, I know you guys found value, so hit that thumbs up button. Most importantly, subscribe, hit that little notification, that little bell next to it so you can get the videos when we come out three times a week. If you're an entrepreneur or a high-performing entrepreneur or wanna become an entrepreneur, I'm sharing with you my best tools, tips, and tricks over the last decade, coaching 17,000 different calls and thousands of entrepreneurs around the world and helping them go to that next level. So tune in for that and also comment. I'd love to hear your feedback, so comment below, let me know. If you're like, hey, Joe, I'm stuck. I, I just, I feel like a failure. I know there's something in me that I need to get out to the world, but I just don't know what. 
go in the description, click on the one-on-one -on -one coaching application, fill that out so we could talk about how can we support you or one of our high-performing coaches to help you break through where you are to get to that next level. So with that, guys, I appreciate you guys watching till the end here. If you uh, if you subscribe too, let me know in the comments. I want to be able to give you a shout out on my next video. But with that, my name's Joe Moffat with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.